بسم الله الرحمن الرحیم السلام علیکم ویر فائن ویر ٹوڈے ویل ڈسکس سمتنگ اباؤٹ اگین سمتنگ اباؤٹ بلیری سسٹم بٹ بیفور دیر ڈسکشن لک ایٹ دس سیناریو A 65 years old age or lady presented with history of vague upper abdominal pain for the last four years. Pain was relieving with off and on medication. She has lost significant weight in the last six months and is suffering from generalized itching and anorexia and jaundice. Now, what, are, what do you expect? What do you expect to find on examination? What is your probable diagnosis? Enlist investigation with justification and what are treatment options? Now first understand this SAQ and SEQ. SEQ means short essay question and SAQ means short answer question. Now, most it is basically short answer question. You do not need to write stories. You have to concentrate on the answer, on the question which you have been asked and you have to use specific answer of that question. Like in this case, what do you expect that which system is involved? System is gastrointestinal uh, tract and among the gastrointestinal tract or GIT system is then hepatobiliary system is mainly involved and pain is in upper abdominal region so and there is jaundice so it means that hepatobiliary system is involved now what do you expect to find on examination apart from kecheksek and uh, very lean and thin emaciated lady you can find on systemic examination that there will be positive corvizal law. What is corvizal law? When you can palpate gallbladder and when gallbladder is palpable on abdominal examination, it means that it's unlikely to be due to stones. It most like, likely to be due to some tumors. <coughs> and what is your most probable diagnosis? Now this is our case today. We are discussing tumors of biliary system. So most probable diagnosis is some tumors of the biliary system. Now, and less investigation with justification and what are treatment options, but now we will discuss each one by one. Now, when it is given, if it is not given that justify, you have to give some justifications. For example, I told you in last lecture that when you do, you divide investigation for confirmation, for extent of the disease and for the fitness of anesthesia. Like when you write CBC, complete blood count, so you will write in front of that, that why you want to do CBC. You will be asked same question why, why in your long case and short cases, that why you want to do CBC. I want to do CBC to know the hemoglobin level of the patient because if it is in electrosurgery, then hemoglobin should not be less than 10 gram percent. And uh, if it is emergency, then we can arrange blood and we can transfuse. Similarly, WBC count will tell us about inflammation or infection in that patient. Now, hepatic biliary tumors, as the scenario is, is, is uh, clear from that scenario, that they present with sometimes there may be no symptom, and suddenly, suddenly, uh, with the short history, there may, there may be jaundice, but vague abdominal pain, anorexia, and slowly loss of weight. Pruritus and jaundice when there is obstruction to the biliary system and on examination you will find, find that patient will be very much emaciated and jaundice. Corvizal lies, I told you. Now why gallbladder is palpable and, uh, and malignancy? Because there is no inflammation and whenever there is inflammation, uh, there will be, whenever there are gallstones, so Mostly there is inflammation and that leads to the contraction and fibrosis of the gallbladder. So it becomes shrunken and it's very unlikely to be palpable, except in few cases of empyema gallbladder of mucosal of the gallbladder when stone stuck in the neck of the gallbladder and then there is secretion of the mucus in the gallbladder and then gallbladder become palpable. But mostly if it is gallbladder palpable, so it's unlikely to be due to stone, it's most likely to be due to some biliary uh, tumors. 
Now, how you investigate? Again, I told you to, you want to first confirm and then extent and then fatness. So LFT will tell you about the again it will tell you about extent of disease that whether that um, tumor has blocked the um, channels or not. So suppose there is some tumor in the common hepatic duct CBD or confluence of the CBD, so there will be blockage to the contents of the uh, to the secretion of the liver and there will be a jaundice and similarly there will be high rise uh, raised bilirubin and sgpt and alkaline phosphatase now tumor markers are um, also show that there is some tumor the specific tumor marker for the biliary tumor is ca19-9 and then you perform imaging studies usually it is picked up on ultrasound that there is uh, there is dilated cbd and there is dilated intrahepatic biliary channel. It may not pick up the tumor, but it will give you some dilatation. If stone, sometimes it picks stone, but unlikely or rarely it may pick the tumors. And then you go ahead for MRI and MRCP and uh, PTC. What is PTC? PTC is per cutaneous transhepatic cholangiography. It is preferred for proximal lesion and ERCP is preferred for distal tumors. I try to draw a diagram if I succeed. Now this is right and left hepatic duct. This is gallbladder. Oh, sorry for this wrong diagram, but this is how I can make it. The stomach and duodenum, and you know, it comes here and it open into the duodenum, second part of the duodenum. And then there is pancreas. <coughs> Now oh, these are the liver area and these are the biliary channels. So <clears throat> now this is the confluence of the So if, if there's some tumor here, so they, these thing will be dilated, this biliary channel will be dilated. So <clears throat> if tumor is here in the uh, confluence of the right and left hepatic duct, so then the easy way, or then there is dilatation of the intrahepatic biliary channel. So then you can, what you can do, you can uh, proceed from the percutaneous way because these are dilated and then you can do percutaneous transhepatic cholangiography and it will show you that there is obstruction at this level and you cannot go ahead from the confluence. So therefore it said that PTC is better for the uh, upper tumors and uh, ERCP for the lower tumor, for, for the lower channel tumor. Suppose if this tumor is here, so then you can pick it on the um, through ERCP. You know ERCP is endoscopic retrograde pancreatic cholangiography. We come back to our lecture. Okay, so the then types of tumors are benign tumors and malignant tumors. Benign tumors are uncommon and may be incidental finding. Incidental finding or that patient have some vague abdominal pain or there is no pain but patient goes for ultrasound or some investigation and it's picked on ultrasound. Benign tumors may, may cause obstruction because they are usually lower down in the distal channels and they may cause jaundice. Papilloma and adenoma, there's multiple biliary papillomatosis, granular cell 
myeloblastomas, neural tumors, leomyomas, and endocrine tumors. Now, no need to remember all these names, but you just concentrate that there is that there is a, a gland, so endocrine tumors maybe they present as endocrine tumors. There is muscle in the channel, so they, they, it, it may be leomyoma, it may be tumor of the smooth muscle. There are neural tissue in there, there are nerves everywhere, so it may be arising from the neural areas and there is mucosa in the channel, so it is either papilloma or papillomatosis. Now these diagnoses are made after investigation, like if you take some biopsy through ERCP and then you will find that the tumor is this. Among the benign tumor, then the most common is papilloma and adenoma. It's frequently in the periampillary area. Periampillary area is the uh, junction where CBD drains into the second part of the duodenum, the periampillary area, ampulla waiter area. And obviously, if it's tumorous there, even if a small piece of um, stone is there, so it will present with jaundice because there is blockage of to the contents of gallbladder of the gallbladder and liver. Another tumor is papillomatosis, a rare multiple mucus secretory tumor of the basal epithelium. It presents with jaundice and it may be intermittent or or and may present may complicate may present with complication of joint uh, cholangitis. Whenever there is obstruction it, due to stones or due to tumor, it will lead to stasis in the liver, and that stasis will lead to infection, cholangitis, inflammation of the biliary channels. <coughs> Malignant tumors are uncommon, but among the uncommon tumors, if it is there, it mostly arises from the gallbladder 60 to 70 percent cases and it may also arise from the intra or extra hepatic ducts in 30 to 40 percent cases now among the malignant tumor then there is cholangiocarcinoma it is rare but its incidence is increasing patient may present with abnormal liver function abnormal liver function that we may maybe no jaundice but patient alkaline phosphatase may be raised which means that there is some obstruction there and there may be raised uh, bilirubin diagnosed by ultrasound, CT, MR, CP scanning. Ultrasound usually done for just for um, uh, vague abdominal pain and then if it is found, you found something, find something on ultrasound, then you proceed for CT and MR, CP. Now, the time they are diagnosed, so they are spread uh, quite rapidly. So the majority of the patient will be able to receive only palliative care. It's um, not possible to resect because surgical resection is possible in less than 10% of the cases. Usually it spreads to the surrounding tissue, then it's very difficult to cut everything, especially portal vein is there, hepatic arteries are there. So its prognosis is very poor and most the patients die in within one year after diagnosis. Adjuvant chemo or radiotherapy has no role, a limited role. Only better role is of surgery, but surgery is uh, beneficial only less than 10% cases because of resectability. These cholangiocarcinoma are then mostly at the biliary confluence, as I just shown you in the diagrammatically, and they may be 20 to 30% cases, distal areas, and in 10 to 20% intrahepatic areas. Now, exact cause of cholangiocarcinoma is not known, but these are the risk factors that chronic inflammation due to even stones, uh, cholangiohepatitis, hepatitis C infection can give rise to cholangiocarcinoma. Some parasitic infection like lunarco sinensis, congenital conditions, cholidocal cysts, Caroli's disease, Caroli's disease is cystic dilatation of the biliary channels. And then some occupations like asbestosis and these other chemicals may also be used in some occupations, which I, which I don't know exactly, but these are different. These all chemicals are used in some in, uh, in uh, occupations. The people who are exposed to these, these repeatedly to these chemicals ultimately develop some complication due to these, uh, these chemicals. And then there is some surgery like biliary, if you perform some anastomosis for biliary, 
uh, surgery. For example, you have damaged, somebody has damaged the biliary CBD during surgery, and then you perform hepatic cojunostomy, like you make take a jejunum and attach it to the common or hepatic common hepatic ducts. So that lead to entrance of content of uh, small gut into the biliary channel, and that may give rise to cholangiocarcinoma at later in later age. Now, multidisciplinary approaches required in this case. Choice of treatment depends on site and extent of the disease because if it is um, uh, at the lower end, treatment is different. If it is the upper end, treatment is different. Majority patients present with advanced disease in 10 to 15 percent are suitable for surgical resection. Aim of surgery is to, comp uh, to achieve complete resection. If you can comp achieve complete resection of tumor with tumor free margin, tumor free margin is that you take also some, uh, you also resect some normal tissue. And after that, you can restore the continuity of the um, normal continuity of the structure. Then you can say that I have achieved complete resection. Negative pathological margin or tumor free margin. and you can safely restore the biliary enteric continuity, then you can say that achievement is complete or is aim has been achieved. Now, if tumors are distal and you want to achieve complete resection, then Whipple operation is a choice. Whipple operation is a pancreaticoduodenectomy. We can see in this diagram, there are three structures which are, which will be sacrificed in this operation to get complete resection, uh, proximal part of the pancreas, uh, uh, almost all duodenum and gallbladder. So these three structures are removed along with the, this uh, biliary channels. Now you can see again the same diagram that and you do not need to know the, the all steps of operation, but you should know that what is Whipple's operation. It is pancreatico duodenectomy, And when you do pancreatico duodenectomy, you remove three structures and you make three nasomoses. So remove three structures and make three nasomoses. Duodenum has been removed, a pancre head of pancreas has been removed and and gallbladder has been remo removed along with the biliary um, channels, proximal biliary, distal biliary channels. Then what you do, you make jejunal pancreas um, anastomosis, pancreatico jejunostomy, colidaco jejunostomy, and gastro jejunostomy. And then it continues door down. You can see three resection and three anastomosis. This much is sufficient to, for you to uh, about Whipple's operation. Okay. Another option is liver transplantation. It is recommended in selected patient, meaning that when locally unresectable disease without evidence of distant mats. It is like, there are no distant mats, but it's locally, uh, we cannot get the tumor free margin and then you can do liver transplantation. And then it is combined with chemo radiotherapy as an adjuvant. Unresectable disease, well, you will be, uh, in unrestrictable cases, you will perform palliative therapy. Palliative therapy means that you just palliate the symptom of patient. Like if patient is jaundice, but tumor is unresectable, it is attached to the portal veins and other structures, to vena cava or aorta. So, but you need the patient to relieve the jaundice of that patient. So, what you would do, you put stent through ERCP if the tumor is distal and uh, through PTC if the tumor is proximal. You put uh, some strength so that there is the conduit become patent and content of the liver can come to the intestine.
Now this is PTC, percutaneous transhepatic cholangiography. This is through liver they have gone and they find you can see something. You cannot come down, dye is not coming up from here to lower down or it's coming very little amount. So it means there is some dilatation of the biliary channels. Here you can see that uh, the um, biliary channels are dilated, but there is very thin luminous there. So mean that there is some tumor here which is compressing upon the uh, this, this channel. Now after cholangiocarcinoma, like we have discussed so far, benign tumors and malignant tumors and benign tumors are papilloma, papillomatosis, neural tumors, leomyoma, and um, um, glandular tumors. And then there is, in, in malignant tumor, there is cholangiocarcinoma and then carcinoma of the gallbladder. Carcinoma of the gallbladder is around 60 to 70% among the biliary tumors. Women appear to have higher incidence and usually present in seventh or eighth decade. If you concentrate on that scenario, which I have given you, so there are also a, a lady of um, old age lady. So these scenario are best when uh, you should, when you read this, uh, your, um, your textbook or whatever book, so you should concentrate on clinical features because scenario will be given to you from the clinical features and they will include the gender of the common gender of, of the, that disease, the common age of their disease, and they may give you some risk factor. Like I have given you in that scenario that a lady of an old age lady. So you can now see that women appears to have higher incidence in, in, oh, in the last years of say seven to eight decades of life. Unclear, but associated with pre-existing gallstone disease. It's not necessary, but patient who having disease, is, as you have seen also in case of cholangiocarcinoma, that infection, inflammation is one of the cause of cholangio, one of the risk factors for the cholangiocarcinoma. Similarly, it is also a risk factor for the, the stones are also a risk factor for developing carcinoma of the gallbladder, although it is not sure that it's definitely will develop. And then the calcification again, again is a type of stone, chronic infection and if there are adenomatous polyps. And then among these tumors, majority are adenocarcinoma. <coughs> Squamous may occur commonly is nodular or infiltrative type tumor is there. Nodular means that light, it's like, as you see polyp, it may, it will be in a form of nodule. Infiltrative, it spread into the layers of the of the gallbladder mucosa and zero sub mucosa and muscularis and serosa. Now, it, it tumor can spread through direct extension because it's lying in the liver bed, so it's in direct contact with the liver. And on the on the one side and on the on the peritoneal side, it is the peritoneum is lying over this gallbladder, so it can spread through peritoneal cavity to the peritoneum. At presentation, majority of tumors are advanced. Why advanced? Because it is on one side, it spreads easily to the liver and other side, it easily can spread to the, uh, from the, to the intestines and lymph nodes in the intestine, the um, GIT. Now we'll proceed with the list of investigation as I told you already, CBC, LFTs, uh, ESR, C-rector proteins and all these investigations. Now, majority of advanced disease are not candidate for surgical therapy. Such is indicated only very selected cases. <clears throat> now, radical in block resection that may include segmental or extended hepatectomy, bile duct resection, and regional lymph radiectomy should be considered in selected patient. The aim of surgery is to remove the tumor entirely and achieve negative histological margin, if you can do that. Now, when you when we perform cholecystectomy for the gallstone, so it should be subject to histopathology. Now, if it shows when you subject his gallbladder to the histopathology, it shows that there is adenocarcinoma and it is limited up to the mucosa or submucosa. So that is sufficient. No further treatment is required. But if your report comes that the um, outer layer is also involved of the gallbladder and there is no tumor-free margin. When no tumor-free margin, it means that there is some 
uh, something in the liver bed or there may be extension to the liver bed. So then you, what you do, you do some resection of the, now ultrasound will not pick the, those things, but then you will do some resection of the, um, of the gallbladder fossa, you do some hepatectomy and then even that you subject to histopathology if you get tumor free margin in that. So will you do? It means that you have achieved complete resection. But if there is um, if there is something in the gallbladder, some mass in the gallbladder, and there are multiple metastases are present in the liver, so then you cannot proceed to perform anything. You can just palliate the symptom. You will do. You may give some chemo or radiotherapy, but you cannot perform the curative surgery. Now these are different stents which we can use if there is tumor in the gallbladder at is pressed upon the CBD. So CBD will be collapsed, but and patient will have jaundice. So what you can do, you can not remove the tumor. If you even remove the tumor, it is already metastasis in the body. So tumor will be there in the whole body. So what you will do, you will do, you will improve quality of life of patient by putting some strength through ERCP or through PTC. So patient will, will not be jaundiced and uh, <clears throat> the morbidity will be decreased. So thank you very much, dear students. It was all about biliary tumors. I hope you will learn something today and I hope you will remember and <clears throat> you should learn from this lecture one more thing that when you read your uh, your book you should concentrate very much on uh, history on the clinical features of that disease and examination finding because all scenario will be based on history and examination so you should concentrate that diseases are common and which gender in where, at which age and what are the risk factors for those so it will be easy for you to pick in the in your exam thank you very much and allah hafiz